Hi, welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman and today I'm going to be presenting to you week number 14 of my 52 week series of Scrappy Blocks and this one is called Christmas Family Circle and in this 52 week series I am presenting to you every Monday a different Scrappy Block for you to use to use up your scraps and if you haven't watched my video yet on speedy solutions to cut, sort, and organize your scrap stash, make sure you do that. The link is below and it will help you get everything cut, sorted, organized, and ready to use in beautiful quilts. I also do have my Speedy Solutions Techniques book and my Patterns book. You'll find those out on my website if you're needing some help along the way. They're great options for you, so check that out. The link is below. Now let's take a look at the Christmas Family Circle block. That's what I've entitled it. And let's find out what you need. There is a PDF that is attached. This, this is the instructions that let you know what you need and I'll be going through this as we um, create the block. And I also have attached an idea for you on how to put together a quilt uh, using this block. We all often get together with family members over the holidays and I thought it might be a wonderful idea to take these center blocks with you to the family celebration and have members of your family sign them. You can use it as an album quilt, a signature quilt, or maybe your family's um, members could put a special memory or a Bible verse on there and then you could bring those squares back home, put the blocks together and make a beautiful quilt. What a wonderful keepsake for your family. So on the second page of the PDF, here's just a quick little idea of um, some color variations. You can do anything with this. You are welcome to uh, swap out the values, put lights where the, li the darks are, put darks where the lights are. This is your quilt, have fun with it. And it's your scrap stash. So use what you have and have a wonderful time creating some beautiful quilt memories with it. Now let's see what you need for this block. So for this block, I went to my three and a half inch bin and I also pulled my six and a half inch bin and my one and a half inch bin. And that is what I'm pulling for this particular block. And so what I used on um, this one and for these right here is I've, I've grabbed one of the six and a half inch lights and that's what I've used here. So that's one six and a half inch light. I've used four of the three and a half inch lights for the corners, so that's what I'm pulling there. I have eight of the, I'm sorry, three and a half inch is what I meant to say. I hope that, hopefully that is what I said. And I need eight of the three and a half inch uh, mediums or darks for uh, around the circle here. And I have eight one and a half inch darks to snowball these corners. So I listened to that clip again and I guess I did mention it correctly. So it is one six and a half inch light, four three and a half inch lights, four, excuse me, eight three and a half inch uh, mediums or darks, and then eight one and a half inch mediums or darks uh, that you're going to use for snowballing. So let's take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to make up a couple of them here for you and let's take a look at how, what this is going to turn out like. All right, so here we are at the sewing machine and the first thing I'm going to do is snowball my six and a half inch square. And as you saw last week, and I think I've done this on other uh, blocks as well, we're simply going to take these little uh, one and a half inch squares and I am going to snowball each corner by laying them right sides together, putting that one and a half inch square right up in that corner. And you can, if you want, draw a diagonal line from corner to corner, if that will help you to sew on that line better. But because it's such a short distance and because I've done this so much, I am just gonna eyeball it. And I'm gonna sew from corner to corner. I'm actually gonna sew a thread or two closer to this corner. And that will just allow for the turn of fabric because we are going to be turning that over there in just a moment. So let's see how this is done. Oops, I should have started with my leader again. All right, so I have sewn from corner to corner. We're going to be turning this over just like that. And that's snowballing the corner. 
and then what we're going to do is trim away this excess fabric here and as I showed you last week if this was a lot more fabric I might go ahead and sew on this side and create another half square triangle with it and save it but because it's so tiny I'm going to put it in my pet pillow for stuffing and so there is one corner that is snowballed on my six and a half inch square I am going to actually snowball each of the four corners on the six and a half inch square so I'll do that and I'll be right back so here is the six and a half inch snowballed square and this would be the square that you could take with you. You'd make up as many as you felt you need for your family album quilt and take these with you to your family celebrations and have your family members sign them. Maybe you'd like this square to be a red square or a green square and uh, use a nice dark um, permanent marker uh, that your family could write on there so that it could be uh, visible or use a light square, whatever. There's so many options available, but I think it would be a great idea idea to uh, create a beautiful memory keepsake for your family. So not only are you going to snowball the six and a half inch square, but you are going to snowball the four light squares. These are the corner squares, but you're only going to snowball one corner of each of those squares. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm basically taking the dark one and a half inch square and I'm placing it up in the corner of each of these three and a half inch light squares and I'm going to bring it up to my machine and again if you feel more comfortable drawing a line on the wrong side of the fabric from corner to corner and then stitching just to the right side of that that's fine it's a great way to do it but I'm I feel that because it's such a small area I'm just going to eyeball it and stitch from corner to corner just um, a thread or two on the right hand side and as you see here I'm doing this in uh, assembly line fashion Okay, so they have all been stitched and now what we can do is trim away the excess and we're going to finger press it open and then I'm going to take these all to the iron and press them. I'm pressing toward the dark and on both the six and a half inch block or square as well as the three and a half inch squares and then I'm going to make sure that they're all squared up to what they should be these should be three and a half inches square this should be six and a half inches square so I'm going to press and square them up and I'll be right back okay so now I'm going to I've got everything pressed and squared up to three and a half inches and six and a half inches and now I'm going to lay out the blocks so that we can put are the squares so we can put our block together and I'm putting the light squares out in the four corners and I'm making sure that the snowballed corners touch or kiss the snowballed corner of this six inch square and then I'm placing the eight three and a half inch mediums or darks whatever value you choose here on row one row four and then row two and three they're just like that so um, we're going to go ahead and sew this block together um, we'll simply sew row one together right there and then we'll sew these two pieces together and then we'll sew those two units to the center and then we'll sew row four together and I will do that and I'll be right back
All right, so here is the block, and you'll see the circle that's formed by these small little one and a half inch um, squares that snowball the corners here. And it's just a beautiful, simple little block. It goes together very quickly. I love creating uh, quilts from lots of scraps that I have, and I, I seem to have a lot of three and a half inch squares right now, a lot of one and a half inch squares. So um, I'm trying to use up these scraps in quilts that use those sizes, and this is a great one for that purpose. Now let me get this pressed and squared up to 12 and a half inches. All right, so here are the three blocks that I've created, and I've gotten them pressed and squared up to 12 and a half inches. I did, whenever possible, try to press toward the dark. It depends on where, which, where the values lie within the quilt. So in my case, I pressed outward as I could. So um, that's, that's how I've accomplished mine. I love these simple little blocks. And I got to thinking as I was making them, I believe what I'm going to do is create the six and a half inch snowballed squares and include that square in my Christmas cards to my family members and friends and ask them to return them to me with their signatures and uh, maybe a Bible verse or a special memory. What a great keepsake that will make in a quilt. So I hope that you'll make this block, this fun little Christmas family circle block. Please let me know, put, put something in the comments about what you plan to do with it if you're going to make this uh, as a special memory quilt of your family or of your friends, or maybe your sewing bee or your quilting bee. What a fun project that would be. Don't forget to download the PDF. Um, I would, if I were you, create a playlist or at least save all of these PDFs and uh, the videos so that you'll have easy access to them. And don't forget, I'll have some great projects coming up this week. I'm going to be doing my holiday snowman table runner, so you'll be watching that tutorial here in a couple of days. And I'll be finishing my um, kimono jacket as well. I'm having an issue right now with my long arm quilting machine. It just basically died on me, so I've got the snowing repairman coming in two days. So he'll be here in a couple of days to get that back up and running so that I can get things back up there and get quilting on a lot of projects that are sitting and piling up actually. I so appreciate my quilting friends and viewers out there, and I hope that you're all having a wonderful holiday season. If you do like the projects that I share on my YouTube channel, please don't forget to like and to subscribe, and then hit that notification button also so that you'll not be notified when I have a new uh, video that I've uploaded. I hope that you have a great week. I've got much more to come this week, so stay tuned. Happy quilting. Have a great week.